the intersection of diversity lives innovation. So when you're able to bring together different groups of people who have different experiences, that's where innovation is born. <laughs> Hey everyone, I'm Travis Montague, founder and CEO of Holler, and this is Conversation Nation. I am joined with Linda Yaccarino, Chairman of Global Advertising and Partnerships at NBC Universal. Linda, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Travis, I'm so excited to be here. In addition to spending always smart time with you, I know the luminaries that you've had with you in the past, and I'm so excited and flattered to join the ranks. You are a legend in the media industry. Why don't you give a quick uh, quick background of uh, yourself and your story? The legend concept is a little hard to process, but I'll <laughs> tell you a little bit about my background and career. Uh, you know, originally I was very much into the creative or production side of the business, but I early on in my career, as a matter of fact, when I was in an internship position, I fell in love with the business of content. And I've spent the lion's share of my career between two giant media companies, one being Time Warner, now known as Warner Media, and the other, obviously, NBC Universal, since Comcast acquired NBC Universal. So what was always interesting to me and kept me going throughout my career, being in love with the content and its impact on viewers and consumers, always kept pushing me to what's next. You know, you've seen this evolution of content. And, you know, we certainly know that consumers have changed a lot and even more so in the pandemic, right? As a leader in this space and how consumers, uh, how consumers are touching content, what are some of the things that you're most excited about or, or, or looking forward to as we, or paying attention to as we're looking out into the future? So what we kind of knew was happening or was going to come with, with linear viewing or consumption continuing to decline and digital and streaming con consumption increasing, the last 15 months have accelerated that probably beyond five years than any of us expected. So it's, it, it's fascinating to say now the marketplace itself is forced to converge or reflect that consumer behavior. The consumer doesn't differentiate, doesn't con uh, differentiate between content platforms, right? Broadcast, cable, streaming, they just can't get enough of great content. So if you're able to distribute great content in context, you'll be able to create a lot of new marketplaces which enable consumers to come together with brands that they love. I love what you were talking about here around con content and context. Cause I mean, at Holler, our philosophy is that around conversational media, which is like, how do we not reimagine the types of content that people utilize in this type of environment, right? right. right? And, and how do we make sure that we are using the best blend of technology to ensure that it's delivery is being delivered in the ways that make sense. I follow your content, so I, I, I loved how you talked about um, uh, NBC Universal's focus on technology, right? And kind of changing, uh, it, it changing kind of the definition of how you guys think about yourself. Could you talk about that a little more? I love that conversation. Well, I, you know, it really comes from our kind of simple philosophy that if you you are a content company and you put the consumer at the center you really have to reflect their behavior i'm always telling my teams as we're developing new product lines or bringing something new to the marketplace like we have to keep listening to the consumer because we don't want to be building something or i tell them we don't want to build a car nobody wants to buy and when we think about it that, that we then say, okay, are we really a tech-driven content company or a content-driven tech company? Regardless, we sit at the intersection of those two things. You have to be platform-specific but screen agnostic. And that's where you really have to keep your ear to the ground and listen to the consumer 
of what they're interested in and how they want to receive your content because then I'll be able to be successful and offer marketers a much stronger offering. When you're looking at the future, right? My question for you is like, what does this all mean for brands? Brands, marketers are facing so many different type, types of challenges with respect to whether it's the conversation around privacy and you know certain identifiers going away and all of these things that are uh, kind of shaking up the industry a bit. Um, so I would love to hear your perspective on the, the general conversation on where you see our space going. What I'd like to talk about in the last, you know, I would say year and a half of talking to CMOs and CEOs has all been uh, uh, largely about the same thing. The first thing is we're never going back to where we were before the pandemic. And the good news about that is, is that it is giving us all permission to accelerate and change the things that we really knew we had to. So now there's no excuse. It really demands trusted partnerships being formed, right? Because you can very easily in this environment make decisions quickly to get to the immediate next best bottom line. You have to know that you have like-minded values with your partners because you're going to have to hold hands and jump into that future when you're doing never been done before. If you can't blindly trust your partner, you're going to likely end up in a place you don't want to be. And you have to maintain trust with your consumer because it's almost impossible to get it back when you lose it. Well, I love how you emphasize trust as a concept. You know, one of the things that has really come into the front forefront is the responsibility of organizations and business leaders to affect the world bigger than the products and services they provide, right? And so, you know, I would love to hear um, your perspective and NBCU's perspective on, you know, its role in conversations like diversity, inclusion, and belonging, and, you know, some of these other issues that have become an important part of running a business in this day and age. If you think about it, I think it was the CEO of BlackRock three years ago. So so before, before the pandemic, before the awful social crisis, and he talked about calling CEOs to attention, right, all over the world, that companies in the private sector had a bigger responsibility to both their employees and their customers to fulfill a gap in society that it was once assumed that the government would provide for people. So it was a call, you used the word to service. I would say it was also called to purpose, right? So we had a responsibility to impact culture for the good. And the bottom line is when you have those priorities and values as a company, it's good for business. Mm -hmm. It inspires your employee population to want to be proud. They're proud to work at your company. They bring other good people to your company, but it's also good for the bottom line. You know, when I look at doing good, right, and the equity that it plays for your brand, it has outcomes. When we look at uh, issues around diversity, inclusion, belonging, and those types of conversations, you know, for us, like when you're serving content to a global audience, you know, you, it's really important that you have diverse perspectives, right? Which enable uh, creativity and creativity to incur, to happen at the company that facilitates what the needs of all these audiences everywhere, which hits the bottom line. At the intersection of diversity lives innovation. So mm -hmm. when you're able to bring together different groups of people who have different experiences, who look different, have different voices. That's where innovation is born. I just find you to be motivating for any type of leader in our industry. But I, we, I, I would love to hear your, your um, thoughts, advice that you may have for female leaders who, who, are, who are up and coming and they, they look at your career and, and see where you are. What advice would you give them? I, I tell them to own their diversity.
right? Own it. I own it. Look, someone once, by the way, I was getting headshots recently asked me, do you really want to wear a pink dress? I was like, I I in this, this time, this year, is pink? Like, yeah, I'm wearing that, right? So <laughs> like a real thing. So for me, I've always uh, embraced and owned my femininity throughout my career. I've often, particularly as I've progressed in my, my career, I've often been in a room with just men. So uh, many early mentors of mine said, you're different. Who wants to be like everyone else in that room? So speak up, let them hear your voice, be prepared. But you'll be the one they talk about when you walk out of the room because you were different, right? Yeah. But I would say in addition to that, uh, you know, you got to be good at your job, right? But you yeah. can't only just do your job. You got to stretch. You got to step a little out of your lane to get ahead faster. It's kind of like when you always, like when you're driving and you want to get in the left-hand lane to pass somebody, yeah. right? In the right way, right? But you want to be doing more so you can accelerate and move faster. So I constantly am telling them, be a student of your business. Learn of as best you can of what's coming next because it will propel you forward. First off, thank you so much for coming and talking to us. This has been a phenomenal conversation as I expected. I know you have a crazy busy schedule, so I appreciate it. Uh, and we will see you around next time. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Next time, I hope it's in person. So stay well and I look forward to seeing you again. It's gotta be. Thank you.